Hey everyone, Jaren here from Resource Magazine, and right now in front of me, I have the latest version of Premiere Pro 2015 CC. And in this application, there's one feature that I think caught everyone in video's attention because it sounded so amazing, Morph Cut. And right now, I'm gonna show you guys what Morph Cut does, how it works, and what you can expect from it if you're going to use it. So basically, Morph Cut works a lot like any of the other transitions in Premiere. You it's over in the Dissolve section, and when you drag it over onto a clip, you can then determine where exactly between two cuts you want it to occupy. Now it comes in rather large, but sometimes, as you can see here, I can see my audio is definitely kind of overlapping, so to an extent you can bring it in and try and clip it so that it doesn't get in the way of each individual word someone is saying. You can't clip this too far down or it, when it's done analyzing, it's going to say something along the lines of clip short is too short. So I found that about that much is the most that I can do. Now the goal of Morph Cut is to make it so that we don't have to use a second camera when someone is speaking between sentences unless we you know, really want to change the field of view. A lot of the time when we're editing video, what we'll come across is we need to splice together a few frames and move the camera a lot just to get a complete sentence out of someone because maybe they said too many words in there and we really want to keep it down in time. Or they add a lot of ums and uhs that we're trying to clip out and keep a nice concise video. Morph Cut has been advertised as the solution to that without having to jump cameras all around. Now most of the time we'll shoot with two cameras, two to three cameras for major productions or sets like that, but in a case like this where I'm only using one camera, this sounds like a solution that might work for someone doing a video blog or have their own YouTube channel and avoid the dreaded jump cut which is moving from something like where I'm talking over here and then suddenly I'm over here. That's kind of the thing that this is supposed to eliminate. So what I want to do is I want to show you some examples of how Morph Cut worked in the real world and I've got some shots that I did a while ago that I'm going to put next to each other, one with the original jump cuts and another with Morph Cut in place and you can kind of see how it works. My name is Anthony Toth. We're in a warehouse in City of Industry which contains a vintage 747 set and cockpit. And uh, I just got sick of waiting around for someone to hire me. <laughs> what I ended up doing was uh, over like a year or so, I just kind of kept one, one ear to the ground, so to say. And I kept an eye open for cool aviation related places to shoot. I stumbled upon Anthony's project here. And it was on like some British newspaper I originally saw. Dedicated photo mission, say like over Pikes Peak, we may have one pass, one opportunity to capture the sick ship. I tell people it's a roller coaster on steroids and you're pulling those high G's by five or even by six G's. Ultimately, once he finishes that uh, circle, he's ending at close to nine. Any more than that, I mean, you're talking about just absolute muscle failure. But I think Mike, on a different level, I think what Mike means to skateboarding, I think Mike represents an idea that anyone can be a part of something. So Morph Cut works really well in some situations and okay in the ones where we're expecting to see it in the real world. So that said, as an application that's brand new and a, a function of Premiere Pro that hasn't had any additional pieces added onto it later that make it cleaner, it's good but not perfect. It's not the solution that I was hoping it would be and I probably will use it sparingly just because I know that it's not perfect at everything. Morph Cut also has a problem because it's actually based on facial recognition and in some cases it can't recognize a face. In this example you can see that the face is taking up 75% of the frame. Unfortunately Morph Cut didn't recognize that it was a face. And that's a problem especially when shots like this are pretty common in dramatic interviews. Morph Cut also couldn't tell the difference between a face and a chair when I shot from a profile at a somewhat extended distance. It's not good at figuring out where a face is, except in perfect, this is a standard interview format. And though that's what we'll generally be using in situations where we'll need morph cut, it's unfortunate that it's not good for all types of interview situations. So in my opinion, Morph Cut is good, not great. It requires everything to be just right in order for it to work, and unfortunately in the real world that rarely happens. So 
it's good, I want to see it expanded on and improved upon, and when it gets to the point where it can really do things where we as video editors need it to, I'll be excited to use this more often. For now, I'll focus on the other applications that have been added to Premiere Pro that are actually really amazing, and we'll go into those in reviews at later points. If you have any questions on MorphCut that I maybe didn't cover in this, make sure you ask them in the comments below. And for all things Adobe Premiere Pro, as well as everything in the world of photo and video, make sure you keep it locked to resourcemagonline.com.